Alright, we starting this off with what might be a two, three, even a four part question. The first section came from my guy Patricio. He said, Hey Engraven, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, I have a question for you. Do you really think that the Ravens will actually trade for someone like DJ Moore? I would love if they did, but I don't think that they will. Ravens never make a good effort to acquire a proven wide receiver like DJ Moore. It wouldn't be the first time we miss on a wide receiver like that. Remember DeAndre Hopkins? Remember all the really good wide receivers that we could have traded for, but the Ravens said... No, let's stick to our guys. I try to see which gaps we have on our team, but our offensive line is looking good with Stanley back. Our tight end group is obviously great. All right. Are they? They got depth. I wouldn't call them great. Mark Andrews is great. I wouldn't call our tight end group great, but Mark Andrews is great. But anyway, um, our running back group looks great with J.K., Gus coming back soon. Justice Hill coming back soon. Ken Drake and Mike Davis. <laughs> See, he ain't say nothing about them. He just had Ken Drake and Mike Davis. Um, on our secondary, there's nothing but playmakers. Our pass rush is getting better and better. And with Tyus and the job ball coming back to practice, the weakest thing on our team I can see is our wide receiver core, which obviously I love Duvernay and Bateman. But with DJ Moore, we would just be unstoppable. Imagine how stressed our opponents would be trying to make a game plan against Lamar Jackson, DJ Moore, Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, Mark Andrews, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards. I really think that with DJ Moore, our team could really see Lamar win number one next year. If you know what I'm saying, I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. And that's it for me. Also, thank you for helping me with my fantasy trades on Twitter. Ha <laughs> ha! Have a nice one. I love it. I love it. Because you, you talked about a lot of one of the reasons why I had wanted them to get a proven guy this offseason. Make not only Lamar's job easier, make everybody else's job easier too. Because who are you going to double? Who are you going to try to take out the game? Especially with this emergence of Devin Duvernay now. Because you get a DJ Moore. Or, and this is really for any proven receiver that's like that. But you get a DJ Moore. Rashad Bateman's life gets easier. Because all this attention goes to DJ Moore. People know about DJ Moore. People don't know about Rashad Bateman like that. But then Rashad Bateman would have an opportunity to tell him about himself. And then with Devin Duvernay, he could still continue to do it there. Mark Andrews, and you mentioned J.K. And then, of course, the guy who's throwing him all these passes, Mr. Lamar Jackson. I would absolutely love it. But my guy, Kevin. My guy, Kevin. Uh, and shout out to my guy, Kev, because I, I got a lot of love for him. He is somebody that is like, A, no, we got enough. Hey, no, our receivers are just fine. And I ain't got no problem with anybody saying that. But he's, he's been adamant about that for a long time. He sent me emails saying, hey, I told you we didn't need a wide receiver. But this email that he sent me. Let's read it. It says, get DJ Moore. He said, okay, Engraven, I changed my mind. Whoa, buddy. Hold up now. I ain't got no problem with nobody changing their mind on anything, especially this topic. But anyway. He said, I changed my mind with the Ravens defense getting healthy, Ronnie, J.K. and Gus getting healthy. Go all in and get a number one receiver. Do not waste this year. Go all in. So I changed my mind. We do need a top receiver. Mm. I love it. 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 I, I, I love it. And I appreciate it. Um, now. Uh, when it comes to the wide receivers. And um, I think it would just help the offense so much because, like we've mentioned a couple of times, he, I didn't even notice it because of how dramatic and stressful and crazy the win against the Bengals was. But the Ravens are still doing a lot of the same stuff. Second half, everybody goes, <sighs> Wake up, offense. What's going on? They got to fix that. And we know Lamar missed both Devin Duvernay and Tylen Wallace. But that was all on one drive. That was just on one drive. And missed opportunities are missed opportunities for sure. That would have been seven points. That was seven points on two plays on one drive. So Lamar certainly got to hit those. But besides that, sleep. Sleepwalking. 
Offense sleepwalking again in the second half. You, you can't do that. That is just, that's unacceptable. Now, um, this next part of the question, still talking about the wide receivers now, came from my guy, Coach Jay. He said, should we as Ravens fans get our hopes up about Ravens possibly trading for a wide receiver before the trade deadline? Rumors of DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson. So should Ravens fans get their hopes up? I wouldn't, but nothing wrong for getting excited about the potential of the possibility. Do I think it'll happen? No, I don't. I don't see it happening. I don't think it's going to happen. What I do think is going to happen. Hey, Ravens, feel free to prove me wrong. Feel free to prove me. Feel free. But what I think is going to happen uh, is that the Ravens, we, we hear rumors. Of, oh, the Ravens, they were close, but they just didn't want to give up X and Y and Z. Oh, the Ravens were interested, but they just didn't want to make the move. Oh, the Ravens thought about it, but they just they decided to, 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 to pull out at the last second. That's what I think we'll end up hearing. We usually hear it usually every year. Yeah, every year. Last year, the big name for that was uh, Xavier Howard. Remember that? I know a lot of people forget that. But last year, the name was Xavier Howard. With the Ravens, they were in talks with the Dolphins to get X. Mm. That boy's a baller. He's a baller. I know this year he struggled, but I, he, this year he's been hurt too. I think he had like a, a groin injury or something like that. And I remember... I remember when th when that came out, I was like, oh, wow. Because um, my thing was like, all right. Because I know some people were like, oh, but we got Marcus Peters. And we did have Marcus. We still do got Marcus Peters. They were like, oh, but who's going to get paid and what are you going to do? And me, I was like, hey, get him. Get the talented cornerback. Let the money stuff figure itself out later. Don't worry about that. Not get the talent and let the, the business side of figure itself out later. But it didn't happen. So, but back to wide receivers, like, yeah, we, we, we know how that's been. So, again, if you're going to get your hopes up, that, that's cool. If you're going to get excited, get excited, think about the possibility. But I just, I don't think anything's going to happen. But well, anyway, his second part, he said, I understand that the Giants are 4-1, and one, but can we say they've truly been battle-tested? I mean, the teams they've beat are mediocre at best, but they couldn't even beat the Cowboys with a backup quarterback. Even though that backup quarterback has been doing his thing in Cooper Rush. So Cooper is trying, he's making Dak Prescott rush back. Let's try to get a little word playing there with his last name. You know, Cooper Rush, Rush Dak Prescott. Anyway, um, I say that to say that I will subscribe to them being legitimate if they beat us. What's your thoughts? They're legitimate already. Look at their record. Look at their record. Giants can't pick and choose who they play. They can't do that. All the Giants can do Take care of business. That's it. And you did leave out that they did play Aaron Rodgers, too, in that Packers offense. But all Giants can do is take care of whatever team's in front of them. That's it. If the Ravens are the same way. The Ravens beat Joe Flacco, Mac Jones, and a Joe Burrow. They lost to Tua, and they lost to Josh Allen. Some people could say, hey, the Ravens ain't all that. They beat Joe Flacco. And they beat uh, Mac Jones. There's nothing special about those guys right now. So that's the same. The same thing you apply with them could be applied to the Ravens too. But my thing, hey, you can only play who's on your schedule. You can't skip a game. You can't fast forward to a game. You can't rewind. A, no, you can only play who's on your schedule and when they're on their schedule. On your schedule, if some people are hurt, okay. If some people are out, okay. If some people are not playing that good, okay. You can only stick to who's on your schedule, and that's it. So it's your job to beat them. It's your job to win the games. And, hey, the Giants have won a lot more than they lost. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Oh man, I love when we start questions from subs off with a bang. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Let's get into this next question that came from my guy AW Juice Man. He said, Hey, Graven, what's going on? My brother, I hope all is good and well with the fam. So glad the storm missed y'all. Appreciate you, AW. 
With that being said, man, this is random, but I just want to shine light on this player and just a player, but not just a player, but a character. I'm thinking about buying a Pepe Williams jersey. Reason being, you can see he loves the game of football, loves the fans, and loves his teammates. He just overall has a big heart, uh, and that man knows he's not MP Juice Man or Marlo, but when he plays, you just see someone who doesn't want to let his teammates or fans down at all. He's quickly becoming one of my favorite players despite a great game, a good game, or okay game, or even a bad one. Pepe gives it his all, and he's very kind to the fans. Man, that part about the fans... That part I absolutely adore. I, I loved it. Reason being because, and I, I shared this with y'all before, but since you, you bring it up in the way that you brought it up, um, yes, he, uh, remember Carter, when we went to the training camp, um, they had the little part for kids where kids could line up, they could get the jersey signed, football signed, whatever. Uh, so Carter was down there, and Carter was waiting. Pepe came over, and Pepe... He, he, he could have just signed Carter jersey, whatever, and that, that would have been that. And really, with, with getting jersey signed, for me, it's not really a big deal. I don't really care for it. I'll take a picture of some of the video, say what's up, but getting a jersey signed, it's like, oh, okay, cool. But I just wanted Carter to be able to have that experience like with the players and stuff. Because it's like, all right, hey, if the kids, they can meet the players or talk to the players or be like, hey, that's the NFL player. That's the people that, like, in, in Carter's case, oh, this, this is somebody that my, my dad talks about uh, for work on his YouTube channel. Like, and I'm meeting him in person. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I wanted Carter to have that experience. So with Pepe, Pepe came around, and he was signing the kid's jersey and stuff. But with Carter, he signed his jersey, but he was like, hey, he stopped, kneeled down, said, hey, what's your name? You like football? Do you want to play football? And he was talking to him, having a conversation with him. I'm like, well, I, I appreciated that so much, as especially as a father. But I just, I, I loved it because he took the time. He didn't have to. It ain't his job to sit there and talk to a bunch of kids and whatnot. No, he ain't got to do that. He could have signed by, signed by, signed by. But he sat down and talked to Carter, took the time out. And then um, Carter had a, a number seven. Uh, in his hand for Bateman because one of my guys wanted me to try to get it to get signed by Bateman and Pepe saw that and then he's like Bate Bateman was running uh, the opposite way and Pepe was like Bate Bate come here come here come here and Rashad Bateman he came over and Pepe got Rashad Bateman signed that seven I'm like man like that's real right there man so I, I, I really appreciate Pepe as well and however his career goes uh, I'm going to always be rooting for him for sure. I mean, it's off to a pretty good start, but I'm going to always be rooting for him for sure just because of that. Next question came from my guy, Phil Money. He said, hey, great. and hope all is well with you and the family. Today, we heard about Tyus and Ajabo being back to practice. Which games would you like for them to be back? I know the correct, correct answer would be when they're healthy, but assuming that's true, I'm thinking more in a strategic manner. Assuming they're healthy, Tyus versus Saints. I'd like for him to come back here because there isn't much pressure for him to do anything crazy and the Saints offensive line has not been looking too well. Getting his feet dirty uh, and beginning to get reps the game before the bye would be nice. Oh, no, no, no. My, my answer would be as soon as they can come back. I ain't like, oh, no. Hey, hold them off to the Saints. If they're ready, they're ready. Ajabo, okay, again, when he's fully ready. But my thing is, have you not seen Ravens pass rush? <laughs> have, have you not seen it? Ravens need all the help that they could possibly get. So I wouldn't be like projecting them. Oh, no, yeah, they come back in like three, four weeks. If they can come back now and they're healthy, bring them back now because Ravens need it. Uh, he said for a job, oh, it'll be versus the Panthers. The debut for the both of them against mediocre, below average offensive lines. With four more games of rest and practice, he will be straight. He'll be able to continue to learn how McDonald wants to implement his scheme and how he will physically do this in practice until he's 120%. Since it's the game after the bye, it'll be rest. I think the Ravens fans shouldn't be disappointed about it. I feel, I feel like with Ajabo, like I've been saying all, all offseason, like anything they get out of Ajabo is a bonus. So I um, if, if he plays this year, I ain't going to be disappointed at all because, again, I, I consider it a bonus. He said they won't be back for the Giants game. No, at least Ajabo certainly won't. Bowser, I don't think he will be. I know John Harbaugh was like, oh, I'm not counting him out yet. But I don't think Bowser's playing in this Giants game. Uh, but he said, uh, with the Browns having a fine offensive line and still only two weeks of practice, there's the Bucks game, which could be interesting for Tyus to also be back in. That's true. The depth with the both of them healthy is really neat at outside linebacker. JPP, Houston, Tyus, Ajabo away, and even Copeland. 
What are your thoughts? Oh, okay. we done shared them already, so we good to go, baby. Next question came from Kenny Chop. He said, hope you and the fam are doing well. Hey, we doing good. That that Kenny Chop, that reminded me of uh, Karate Chop by Future. Shout out to Future, by the way. Anyway, he said, looking into the, oh, looking into the future. Okay, there we go. Look at that correlation. I'm assuming we will have five healthy running backs soon on the roster. J.K. Gus, Justice Hill, Drake, Mike Davis. Who do you see being active on game day the most once everyone is healthy? And do you see any in a possible trade? I don't really see any in a possible trade, um, but who I see healthy is the ones that the Ravens are the most familiar with and the ones that are the most familiar with the Ravens, that being the uh, J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, and Gus Edwards. I, I think once those guys are fully back, then Kenyon Drake and, and Mike Davis, they'll be things of the past. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, what's up, Engraven? So with the Panthers looking to rebuild, what are you willing to give up for DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson? Also for the Bears, Roquan Smith. Um, wow. I love the names that you brought up. Um, for DJ Moore or Roquan Smith, I'd be willing to give up a first. Straight up. I know some people are like, no, 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 no. Hey, these are our first round picks, not yours. I'd be willing to give up a first and change, like a first and third, first and fourth. Um, and maybe, maybe even if I'm on the phone, I might start a little bit low. I might start at like a second and a fourth. Something like that, maybe a second and just just to test the waters a little bit. But if they like, all right, I'm hanging up. I'm like, no, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. I'll give you a first. Next question came from my guy Matthew. He said, Hey Graven, hope you're well. Ever notice all the years, all the years editions of Madden that they make John Harbaugh look like Andy Reid in physical appearance? He's fat in every rendition. Our coaches does tough mutters. Why do they do him dirty like that every year? LOL. You gotta have a conversation with Madden, man. I thought like for Madden this year. I feel like all the players, I don't know about the coaches, but all the players, they look like skinny. Like everybody looks skinny. Offensive linemen look skinny. Wide receiver looks skinny. Running backs look skinny. Defensive linemen look skinny. I feel like everybody looks super skinny. So with Madden, I don't know what's going on with them. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Rodell. My boy, my boy Rodell. I ain't heard from Rodell in a minute. Welcome back. He said fifth down. My guy, what up though? Ain't check in since the offseason. I'm glad to see you and the team going strong. As always, had to check in and deliver a package to you. Uh, one of my favorite moments of questions from subs is selfish, but it's when I had my own episode because you were stuck on my questions. Hope that don't happen here for everyone else's sake, but let's get to it. First down, a little over a quarter in, and I simply don't hear enough applause for Giro. LJ is the, again, in the MVP discussion because that's just what he does. But by now, we've uh, had we looked like last year, the blame and flames would all be over Giro. I think he's done a much better job thus far and deserves some credit. The vault door looked like it's creeping open a little bit more. Still a long way to go, though. That's true. Giro certainly has improved. I've been hearing a lot of praise for Giro. I've been hearing a lot of it. Um, but yeah, he certainly improved. And, and yeah, like you mentioned about the vault, the creativity with the plays is 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 opening up more and more slowly, but surely. Uh, second down, should we be more concerned with wide receiver? I mean, you know me. I, I've been concerned for three years now, but coming in to the Ravens standards, we believe we had an above decent <laughs> wide receiver room. Me and you have more receiving yards than Benjamin Victor, Proche, and Tylen Wallace. For all the noise we heard on Proche, something is not adding up. Yeah, it's been really weird. Um, now, I know it starts with opportunity, but it really starts with practice. Uh, with, uh, if you aren't winning in practice, you're probably not going to win in games. Hence, game five. Go get DJ Moore, Darius Slayton, Devontae Parker, Chase Claypool once the Steelers don't re-sign him. Oh, look at Chase. <laughs> That's a sneaky one right there. Um, as long as long as it ain't fourth down or third down and the clock's running. But anyway, third down. As of today, who should we attack in next year's draft in the first two rounds? For me, I'm going to go edge round one and, of course, wide receiver round two. And if the opportunity presents itself, move up to get that star talent. Please, what would you do in those two rounds? It all depends on free agency because that's where it starts. It starts in free agency. Can you acquire somebody to fill one of those spots? And depending on who you get or who you don't get, then you would address it uh, in the draft. Um, but I'm thinking um, inside linebacker, definitely. Um, edge, edge depends on a jabo and away. If a jabo and away can do their thing, then edge could go away. That could be something that you could just get depth for and you don't have to draft it early. So you would hope that those two guys and Bowser too, they can make edge issues, concerns go away. But we'll see. Um, Marcus Peters, we'll see what happens happens with him after this year. Um, so corner could be another one. Um, inside linebacker with Patrick Queen, I think we'll see. But that could be another one. 
wide receiver for now, depending on what the Ravens do for the rest of this season and then in free agency. By that track record, then they probably won't do anything, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, it all just depends. And then he said, fourth and one. These fourth and one plays, uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not mad at going for these, but it's all about timing and location. Tucker is Tucker because of usage and reliability. If we aren't going to use them, we could have put that money in a wide receiver one's pocket. Now, if we are going to go for it, I do expect us to be able to get it. However, Giro can certainly be more creative, and we've seen, uh, we've seen a sprinkle of it. But with a Pro Bowl fullback that's 300 pounds, I'd give it to Pat every time. With a generational talent at QB, I expect him and us to get one or two yards. Yeah. Uh, if it works, we're all happy. And obviously, if it fails, we aren't. But most certainly, it should convert more times than not. Yeah, it all depends on the situation. Straight up, like, like you mentioned. And fifth down, what, who, what are your superlatives thus far? Most impressive, Devin Duvernay. Yeah, I, I, I would certainly say Devin Duvernay. Uh, and most surprising, most impressive, like, and, and the reason we say most impressive because it just, for, for me, it wasn't expected for him to be like this. Um, least impressive, the running backs. Um, least impressive for me, uh, probably the pass rush or offense or, or run blocking. Um, running backs, I mean, you could throw them on there too, but yeah, it'd probably be one of the three. Uh, biggest surprise, Marcus Williams. Oh, oh, okay, you had biggest surprise. Biggest, my biggest surprise would be Devin Duvernay. Uh, most impressive, if I, okay, if I gotta take that back, then I'd probably put Marcus Williams. So, biggest surprise, I would switch Devin Duvernay and Marcus Williams. Best rookie thus far, Tyler Linderbaum. Linder Flinder. So, he put Tyler Linderbaum and Jordan Stout. So, yeah, Linderbaum, yeah, he been doing his thing. Um, yeah, he has, so yeah. Uh, worst rookie thus far, mm, Jalen Armand Davis. Mm, yeah, he certainly struggled, and then he'd he been benched. So, yeah, it's it's been tough. Poor guy, but he'll, he'll get it together, man. This, this, it, this humbling stuff, it'll either make you or break you. So hopefully for him, it'll make him. Uh, MVP, Lamar, okay, yeah, you done said that. Appreciate you and the fam, stay safe and successful, and... He is out. So that, that was a fun question. I, I like that. The way you put it, first through fifth down, that was fire. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Shout out to Graven.